I welcome you all to the module number 9 uh, of the course. So, in this, in this module we are talking about uh, emotion regulation and coping and uh, today is overall lecture number 21 and this is the second lecture of the module 9. So, today's lecture is about adaptive emotion regulation using ABC model. So, that we will be discussing in today's lecture. Uh, so, before talking about today's lecture, let me give you a brief recap of the last lecture. In the last lecture, we gave an introduction of the emotion regulation and uh, coping in kind of in more general sense, where we try to understand what is the meaning of emotion regulation and how it is different from coping. So, in that context, we discussed that emotion regulation is a very broad term, where any kind of regulation of emotion, whether you are intensifying or decreasing, whether you are kind of exp trying to uh, kind of experience positive emotion, negative emotion, everything will come under emotion regulation. But coping is a very specific term where you when we try to reduce the negative emotion, generally it comes under coping strategies. Uh, so, kind of we have discussed uh, some of the introductory concepts. We also discussed uh, how, why do we regulate emotions, what are the motivations behind regulating emotions. In that context, we have discussed there could be hedonic reasons, there could be uh, kind of instrumental reason to kind of bring out some specific uh, re, you know, task in a particular situation or it could be related to impression management, it could be related to pro-social reasons to kind of you know, so fit with the social norms and so on. So, we have discussed all these possible reasons why do we regulate emotions and at the end we have discussed how do we regulate emotions, what are the different strategies, what are the different steps that are involved in the emotion regulation process itself. So, in that context, we have discussed process model of emotion regulation and we kind of try to understand the different processes involved and the different strategies that are involved in each of these processes. Uh, so, that is what we have discussed in the last lecture. So, in today's lecture, we will be covering um, more specifically about how can we adaptively regulate emotions. So, more specifically, we will be talking about a kind of coping strategy where we can if specifically the negative emotions when are generated in an adaptive way, how can we regulate them. So, one of the strategy that or overall understanding that we will try to understand is at the thought level, how can, what can we do, how can we change the thought processes. So, we will be trying to understand this whole aspect using a ABC model of Albert Ellis and uh, in that context we will be trying to understand how can we apply that to regulate emotions, particularly reduce negative emotions. So, one of the uh, strategy that we have discussed in the process model also is that we can regulate emotion by changing our thought processes. Because we have seen that thoughts and emotions are very closely connected that we will be discussing now also in the ABC model that mo many of our thoughts uh, emotions that we experience are because of how we think about a situation. So, your emotional balance will be kind of congruent with your the balance of your thought or the kind of thought processes that you have. So, if you have negative thought processes more likely you are likely more likely that you are you will be experiencing negative emotions and so on. So, one of the strategy where we can change our emotion or regulate emotions is by changing thought processes. So, intervention could be at the thought level. So, regulating emotions by changing thought is a fundamental concept in cognitive behavior therapy. So, most of this cognitive behavior therapy whatever strategies therapists use one of the fundamental aspect of all these therapies is that you know they try to intervene at the thought level, they try to identify what are the faulty thought processes the person is having which is causing emotional disturbances and then they try to correct it using different strategies. So, this is one of the fundamental aspect of a large chunk of uh, behavior or, or therapy uh, that is called cognitive behavior therapy, it is one of the most uh, you know used therapy and uh, one of the most effective therapy also used for different uh, disorders. And the fundamental here is changing thoughts, so that they can change the balance of emotions and that is how they can regulate emotions. So, in this process basically involves recognizing and uh, recognizing and modifying thought patterns that contribute to unwanted distracting emotions. So, here basically we try to identify and then modify that is what is done. So, there are two terms used in this context which are connected to changing thought processes. One is called cognitive reappraisal, another is called as cognitive restructuring. So, these are the two essential techniques that are used in most of the cognitive behavior therapy uh, to help individual manage their thoughts and emotions more effectively. So, these both strategies basically focus on changing thought patterns to regulate emotion effectively. So, these are the two basic 
overall strategies uh, that are used to change thought processes for regulation of emotion. Now, cognitive reappraisal when we use this term it basically means changing one's uh, interpretation or appraisal of a specific situation or even to manage emotional responses. So, you change the interpretation of the situation. So, if, if, if a situation is stimulating certain emotions and let us say that emotion is distressing emotion, one can change the way you interpret the situation. So, that is called cognitive reappraisal. So, you are reappraising again looking at the situation and trying to make you know, the different interpretation of the situation and consequently it is uh, changing the emotion. So, it aims to reduce intensity of the negative emotions and promote more adaptive response to stressors. So, obviously, when you are doing trying to interpret one of the main reasons behind it is that you want to reduce the negative emotions uh, by changing the interpretation of the situations. So, this can involve looking at positive aspects. So, we can do uh, the different things we can look at a situation to for reappraisal like you know you look at positive aspects. So, every situation may have negative aspects if you focus on the negative part of it obviously you will experience more negative emotions. On the other hand you can kind of find out some positive aspects to it if you can focus on that it will change your emotions also. Uh, positive aspects uh, uh, also by considering alternative perspective there can be alternatives to the situation that if this situation is not working you can kind of work on some alternative perspectives or one can also downplay the significance of the situation. So, if situation is causing lot of distress you can kind of downplay it is important and see there are many other important things in life and so on. So, like that the, the different ways we can reinterpret a situation. So, all this basically can be called as cognitive reappraisal. For example, if someone is anxious about giving a presentation at work, let us say speaking in front of others and giving a presentation could be full of anxiety for a lot of people. So, one can do cognitive reappraisal to reduce the anxiety like by reframing the situation by interpreting the situation as an opportunity to share your valuable knowledge. Whatever knowledge you have, whatever your understanding you have about a particular topic, this, this is a situation that can kind of is a situation is a provide that opportunity to share your knowledge and valuable information that you have. So, basically you are focusing the positive aspect of the situation. So, if such interpretation you can kind of change it from threat to possibility of sharing valuable information it will kind of impact your emotion also and reduce the anxiety. So, that is an example of cognitive reappraisal. Now, cognitive restructuring is also kind of related term, but it is used more specifically in the context of more deeper underlying uh, assumptions that we have about life, uh, about, about our future, about the world. So, kind of they try to change it because these are more unconscious and deeper. Uh, cognitive reappraisal may be very situation specific, but cognitive restructuring may involve many deeper assumptions that are causing disturbances or negative emotions in us, where that, that sometimes uh, our whole uh, you know, uh, the interpretation process becomes very habitual that it becomes a habit of looking at things in a particular way because of doing it again and again. So, they can become very unconscious. So, cognitive restructuring actually addresses those things in more specific ways to kind of re kind of change those deeper assumptions which may not be very apparent in the conscious mind. So, it is broader and more systematic technique used to identify and modify unhelpful thought patterns or beliefs that underlie various emotional and behavioral problems. So, it targets core recurring cognitive distortion that contribute to emotional distress. So, it is kind of more core assumptions that we have which may be very unconscious people may not realize lot of these assumptions about they may ha have lot of assumptions about life we will be talking about that in the ABC model. So, those may take more time and more deeper approaches than just cognitive reappraisal. So, that is called cognitive restructuring. So, it involves recognizing automatic negative thoughts, uh, challenging their validity and replacing them with more realistic, rational, constructive thought thoughts. So, in this process you replace all these kind of uh, deeper automatic negative thought processes or assumptions about life and about world or about your future whatever it is in a more uh, you know restructure them and kind of replace them with more healthy thoughts. So, that is called cognitive restructuring. 
for example, if someone consistently believes I must always please everyone. So, this could be a kind of deeper assumptions one could have consistently the person tries to do a particular thing because of certain belief system that belief could be I must always please everyone and the person tries to please everyone in every situation because of this assumption and uh, which may create lot of emotional disturbance because you cannot please everyone. So, cognitive restructuring may involve challenging this um, irrational belief that why do you kind of think about why do you that these assumptions could be faulty you know cognitive restructuring will involve identifying that this is a thought that is at the root of lot of your problems and recognizing that it is impossible to please everyone all the time and replacing with more rational belief i can strive to do my best but i cannot control others opinion so like this slowly slowly identifying and then replacing them with more realistic thought uh, is something that is done in the cognitive restructuring. Now, this cognitive reappraisal which is more situation specific and cognitive restructuring which is more kind of addresses deeper automatic thoughts are basically closely related to ABC model developed by Albert Ellis which is also a part of cognitive behavior therapy or uh, cognitive uh, you know the uh, kind of you know rational emotive behavior therapy. Uh, both these aspects are connected to this model. So, ABC model is a fundamental concept in rational emotive behavior therapy which is a form of cognitive behavior therapy, it is a more specific form of cognitive behavior therapy and we will try to understand this model to understand all this uh, how, how to change thought processes and how thought processes could can influence emotions. So, this two techniques cognitive reappraisal and restructuring are used within the framework of the ABC model to help individuals identifying and challenging irrational beliefs and thought process patterns. How that is done using ABC model we will try to understand now. So, what is this ABC theory or ABC model? Uh, this was proposed by Albert Ellis who is one of the most successful and one of the most celebrated uh, therapist and theorist in the cognitive uh, therapy. He developed this uh, rational emotive behavior therapy which is a kind of form of cognitive behavior therapy which focuses on changing the thinking or belief patterns to reduce maladaptive emotions and behavior. So, the focus was to kind of the focus of this whole approach is to changing the belief system or thought processes about different aspects of one's life uh, which are which are contributing to negative emotions and changing them to change the maladaptive emotions that one is generating. So, it is kind of focused on changing thought processes and emotions automatically kind of changes according to the changing of the thought processes. So, the idea is that we humans are imperfect information processors and we uh, develop many distortion or dysfunctional thought processes. Um, most of the time especially when we are kind of thinking about ourselves world and other people. Uh, we do not process information very objectively, you know. A uh, lot of biases are involved in our thought processes. We kind of process according to the way we think something is right or somebody should have behaved like that. Is, uh, these are all our opinions and uh, our subjective interpretation of the situation. So, a lot of this could be, you know, kind of biased, and many times we develop a habit of distortion thinking or dysfunctional thinking, which are not rational lot of these thought processes are not rational and this this functional thinking pattern is common to many psychological disturbances lot of the psychological disorders could be associated with problems in the thought processes itself so there is a problem in the dis, there is a dysfunction in the thought process your thought process is very biased and accordingly you are experiencing irrational uh, emotions and uh, you know negative emotions and which could lead to psychological disorders also. So, a lot of these psychological disturbances could be actually connected to the disturbances of the problems in the thought process itself because we develop many dysfunctional or irrational thought processes as we grow in our, grow in our life. So, ABC model try to address that. So, it is a large percentage of our thoughts are not factual, uh, thoughts are fine when we are talking about you know trying to solve a problem and lot of things they, those are practical purposes is fine. But many time uh, a lot of these thoughts are actually irrational and colored by biases, negativities, insecurities and so on. When we kind of think about our self, our future, about the world, about the other people and so on, lot large percentage of thoughts are uh, kind of very 
biased and uh, full of insecurities and negativities and so on and uh, these, these thoughts could be very deep and unconscious also as we kind of practice them uh, kind of kind of uh, you know uh, kind of process them again and again they can become very automatic and unconscious so therefore many times symptoms of stress anxiety and depressions and other negative emotions are actually caused by distorted and dysfunctional thinking so depression for example could be you know largely it's a problem with the thought processes uh, people becomes very pessimistic and most of the thoughts are very negative about their future and so on uh, so kind of this can become very deep and very uh, recurrent thought processes among the patients of the depression uh, so many time lot of these emotional disturbances are connected to our thought processes itself so therefore one of the useful way of dealing with a lot of these emotional disturbances could be changing our thought processes where so solution could lie there so according to albert ellis you feel the way you think so that's the main core idea your uh, emotions are product of your thoughts so the kind of the your emotion will be decided by your thoughts only so if your thoughts are positive emotions will be positive if your thoughts are negative emotions will be negative so these are kind of uh, very kind of corresponding to each other so you feel the way you think so your thinking will determine your emotions so therefore feelings can be changed by changing the thought process so we cannot directly maybe change emotions very easy um, kind of may not be a productive approach could directly you know change the emotions because the cause is in the thought processes so more kind of productive way of uh, handling emotion could be addressing the thought processes so emotion will automatically change so the problematic emotional reactions are caused by mostly negative self talk or negative thought processes that which are very unconscious at least call them as an irrational or catastrophic thinking so the th thought processes which causes negative emotions or which are very deep within human uh, psyche these are called according to elise they he called it called them as irrational or catastrophic thinking so Al albert elise use an abc sequence to explain all these concepts so let us see what is this abc model is all about so before uh, we are talking talking about abc model so the idea is these three things are connected to each other thought will connect uh, influence behavior and behavior may influence your thought be thoughts can influence your emotions emotion can influence your thoughts feelings or emotions could influence your behavior and behavior can influence your emotions so this all three are kind of interconnected to each other and they each of them can influence each other so that is one of the idea more particularly thoughts and emotions so this abc model talks about that uh, we can kind of uh, look at how emotions are generated in a specific situation so first is a which is activating event so obviously when we experience emotion it is in context of certain event that happens in our life so if something something happens some event happens so that's an a activating event now generally this a, a whenever after this event people generally if that event is emotional it has some emotional consequence then this event will impact you and it will generate certain emotions so let's say some event happens so there will be some consequence c this consequence could be could be anything emotional consequence like you know sadness or happiness whatever it is so something happens and you experience some emotions positive event happens so then you may experience emo happiness if something bad happens you may experience sadness and so on now generally we believe that it is the event a that is causing the c it is a general belief you know that this is causing this it's a kind of we generally believe that this event happens so i am experiencing emotions so something good happened so i am feeling happy because i passed an exam or i passed an in an interview or qualified in an interview so you are happy you are attributing your happiness to or you failed in an exam or you are experiencing sadness so you are attributing your sadness to the failing of the event 
itself. So, kind of we always link A with the C. Now, Eli, Eli says this is actually not right, this path is not right, this is not what actually happens. In actually what happens? Event activates this one called belief or the B is B. B basically means belief. So, lot of belief systems, a lot of ideas, lot of assumptions we have, they get activated after an event. So, if there is a positive event, maybe so many positive thought processes will get activated. Whatever assumptions you have about life, if something negative happens, so many negative assumptions or beliefs that you have will be activated and this belief actually causes this one. So, this one is right. So, this is actually causing this. So, if you have positive thoughts, that thought will cause us happiness or if you have negative thoughts that will lead to sadness or something. So, this event is not causing happiness or sadness, it is this B that is causing happiness or sadness. So, that is something called A B C sequence in that model where he uh, the Albert Ellis is focusing on the belief part which we generally neglect which we do not focus on. Uh, that is the main culprit in terms of emotional consequence and we generally do not never think about that or never kind of catch the real culprit and we all the time attribute the emotions to the events that has happened. So, I am sad because this has happened, I am happy because this has happened. But he says we miss one thing that is the belief system that is generated by that event which is causing. Even itself will not cause emotions. It is how you think and what are the beliefs you have about that event will in will cause the emotions. So, that is the main fundamental thing. That is why the same event can cause different emotion to different people because their beliefs could be different. So, here is an example. Let us say you failed in a task. So, that is A activating event whatever task is given or let us say it, it could be an interview, it could be an examination whatever. So, natural consequence would be you may feel sad, depressed, stressed, anxiety and so on all these emotions could be there. You may feel generally let us say sadness or maybe little depressed and so on. Albert Ellis will say th that is not right. This failure in a task is not causing depression or sadness. It is that this failure in a task will activate certain beliefs that we have which are which may be very deep down, very automatic. So, this belief could be the moment you fail, you may certain thought may come to your uh, mind that I am a failure in life. I am worthless person, these thoughts could kind could be stimulated, you know. Now, this thought could be very unconscious, you may not consciously think like that, but the failure kind of stimulates such kind of thought because uh, you, you have been thinking like that, uh, maybe you are conditioned by the environment or so on. So, these thoughts are there, this could be very deep also sometimes very unconscious and automatic, uh, thus they are generated, the, you fail and automatic these thoughts will come. So, that is the B part that is generated and Eli said these thoughts are actually causing the sadness or depression. The moment you say I am a failure or I am a worthless person, you are bound to experience sadness or depression. That is automatically going to happen, you know. So, failure itself is not causing. So, many people may fail and they may kind of may not feel any sadness depending on how they think about the event. They may feel it is okay, I will try again. They may, they may not feel anything because those thoughts are, these thoughts are not there. The moment a person fails, and if this kind of thoughts kind of gets generated in their mind, that will cause the sadness or depression. If this kind of thoughts are not generated, then it will not lead to sadness or depression. So, event itself is not the cause. It is the belief that is important uh, and uh, the belief that are generated by the event. So, many people the emotional disturbances are actually in the B part, which we generally do not kind of uh, give any importance or we do not even realize that that is the beliefs are causing emotions. We all the time blame the situations or the persons or the events. So, that is something very important. So, uh, that is what ABC model talks about. So, what he is saying? So, most of these emotional disturbances at the B part or the belief part, most of us have lot of irrational beliefs we have. So, these are kind of we develop as a habitual pattern and uh, these thoughts are at the root of many emotional disturbances. So, at the B part this uh, catastrophic or irrational thoughts, we have we all have many such thoughts which may be responsible for many emotional disturbances. So, what are these irrational catastrophic thoughts? So, according to Elise an irrational idea or belief has following characteristics. 
So, this kind of thoughts which causes disturbances in emotion, they are called irrational and they have many characteristics like they distort the reality. So, they are not realistic, you know, they these thoughts distort the reality, they do not present the reality as it is. For example, in the earlier example, the moment you fail in a task and you say I am a failure, this is the distortion of reality. Why distortion of reality? Because it is this thought is not based on the reality, simply because you failed in one particular task that cannot be called as a failure in life or I am a failure means you are kind of assuming your whole personality as a failure. So, you are, so you are kind of taking one instant and kind of making it as a global uh, thought processes. One fail means everything has failed. So, that is a distortion of reality Those, that is not a realistic thought. It is an illogical thought that because it is not based on the reality, so it is illogical. So, there is no logic failing in one task cannot be lead to failure in whole life. So, that is an, there is no logic in it. It prevents you from reaching your goal. The moment you uh, experience or feel that I am a failure, more likely you will not be able to put the kind of effort and energy that is required in the future task. So, it will kind of hinder you to reach your goals in the future task. So, in that sense it will block your energy and the, your kind of motivation also. So, it also leads to unhealthy emotions. The moment you say I am a failure, obviously it will lead to lot many unhealthy emotions. You will experience sadness, um, probably may lead to depression and so on. It will also lead to self-defeating behavior. So, you will not kind of do the right kind of behavior that is required to reach a goal. You will kind of maybe avoid or run away because you think you will not be able to do it because you are assuming you are a failure. So, that can lead to self-defeating behavior also. So, lot of this irrational or catastrophic thought processes has this kind of characteristics and they may lead to many negative consequences in our life in terms of emotions and in terms of uh, reaching goal and other things. So, people have, we all may have many irrational beliefs which uh, consciously we may not, if somebody asks probably we will not say I do not have this kind of belief, but unconsciously we all have lot of, lot of such assumptions. That is why we get, uh, we get disturbed because if something happens which we do not think should happen, uh, because we assume that this should not happen in my life. Uh, this is your assumptions, but you do not know life, what life will bring to you. So, we have many beliefs and assumptions which may be very unconscious, consciously if somebody asks probably you will say I do not have such beliefs, but it is there in many of us. So, this Elise found out that there are three main core irrational beliefs so, and many more associated with them. Others, there can be many other such beliefs, but these are kind of variation of this kind of, they kind of arise from this kind, these three particular beliefs. Uh, these are based on how you think about yourself, what you think your life should be, how you think about other people, how you think about the environment. Based on this, there are three important beliefs which according to Elise are very fundamental to many human beings and they are irrational. One is I must be outstandingly competent or I am worthless. So, there is a, this is one of the belief that could be prevalent in many people's thought processes that people want to kind of all the time experience that they are very competent or if they do not kind of extreme negative that they are worthless. So, this could be one of the major beliefs in lot of people. Uh, others must treat me considerably or they are absolutely rotten. You uh, have an expectation that all the time other people should, especially the people around you should all the time kind of behave very considerably with you. If they do not, they are worthless or kind of rotten people. These are very fundamental, you may not express it like that, but it is there in the assumption. Third is the world should always give me happiness, you know. Uh, there is something that kind of very, very unconscious expectation that we all have, that we all want to experience happiness, that is fine. Uh, but you know, when you kind of believe that uh, world should always give, always is the word, the keyword, then the problem is happening because then if anything goes against your wishes, you will feel disturbed because you are expecting always you should get happiness. So, that is the irrational part of it. So, all these thoughts are irrational. You can think about it why they are irrational. For example, the last one is very clear. 
in all these things there is an irrational component to it. The world should always give happiness, it is not possible, it is not realistic. The way the world or life is designed, human societies are designed, the, each human beings are very different. So, you cannot expect others to behave according to you, the world event that happens in your life can happen very randomly. So, we do not have control over so many things and so things may not go the way you want to go all the time. Uh, so, that expectation of getting happiness all the time is unrealistic, it is not possible and if you kind of assume that you are bound to experience uh, dejection and those kind of unhappiness in response to that. So, all these uh, kind of beliefs and many other beliefs associated with them are irrational simply because they are not realistic, they do not happen this way in the world in the absolute term. Life is very kind of you know relative term, the absolute things do not happen. So, like this we may have many assumptions, but these are according to Elias are core assumptions and many others could be associated with them. So, these core assumptions if you see these catastrophic thinking uh, are based on irrational assumptions, automatic habitual and unconscious though could be very automatic. This could be just an implicit belief that we have, we may not even consciously know that these are there, but this is how we kind of get conditioned or mind get conditions in the society. So, these beliefs take the shape of absolute statement and has many thinking errors. So, these are mostly absolute statements if you see world should always give happiness, must this, I must get this. So, these are mostly if you see this kind of beliefs are in the absolute terms, uh, which is problematic in the real world, you know. So, these beliefs basically if you see they are ignoring the positives. So, even if something positive happen if because of this irrational belief, you may just ignore them. You exaggerate the negative part of it, if something bad happens, you will exaggerate it, if something happens this much, you will exaggerate it to this much, so that is the exaggeration part of it. So, you failed in one task, you are saying my life is a failure, so that is an exaggeration part of it, you understand. So, over generalization means from one situation to every situation, the same, same example is kind of here over generalization. You are failing in one thing and you are saying all the aspects of your life is a failure means you are generalizing from one event to every other thing. You may might have succeeded in so many other things, but you are kind of neglecting that and generalizing to everything else. So, that is the characteristics of many of these uh, irrational thoughts. Now, one thing what is the in terms of applied implication in terms of regulation if emotion since we understood from this model that lot of these irrational thoughts are at the foundation of negative emotions or disturbances or psychological disorders. So, one way, one important implication of this model is that then we need to reduce this kind of thoughts as much as possible because this thought could be very deep and uh, unconscious and could be very automatic. So, we need to kind of reduce them. So, the more we reduce them, even if we are not able to completely eradicate them, at least the more we reduce them, the better will be in terms of emotional experience. Our emotional experience will kind of get towards more positive aspects or negative intensity will be less. So, that is one thing that the ap applied aspects of this model that we sh should reduce this irrational thought as much as possible. So, the question is how can we reduce them? So, the major aim of rational emotive behavior therapy or Albert Ellis whatever the model he gave the major aim he used this idea in the therapies and help people to reduce the irrational thought. So, that is so that's the important part of it. So, reduce the irrational thought using, so one of the thing is if most of these thoughts are irrational, one thing we can reduce them is using logical and rational faculties. So, if something is irrational, the solution for this is that you make it more rational. Now, it could be easier said than done simply because many times we are not able to detect it. So, but the solution lies here. If a thought is irrational and is causing disturbance, we need to make it more rational and replace it more healthy thought. So, but how to do that because many of these thoughts are very unconscious. So, there are two major steps according to Herbert Ellis. One is detection, detecting irrational thoughts which is very important many because most of the time we are not able to detect them. And once we detect the second is dispute them or because they are irrational make it more rational by disputing them. So, how can we detect them? So, that is most important. If you can detect obviously, the changing is not that difficult. So, detecting irrational thought is something very important. Many times basically the best 
one of the things that we can do is that whenever we feel disturbed one thing is that we can ask yourself why are you getting disturbed why are you upset or emotionally disturbed so that is something a question because if something is very deep and unconscious by asking questions you can kind of find out what is going on in your mind so you will become more conscious of what is going on in your mind one of the ways that you ask question so then there your your reflection will be much deeper you can detect those thoughts uh, so your energy will be focused to answer that question so if you ask why am i getting upset or emotionally disturbed then your mind will try to find out the reasons so one of the reason they could find out that i am disturbed because something has happened wrong or something is not right then you may kind of further ask question uh, or look at what is going on in terms of thought processes you know is everything if that emo- in this uh, uh, situation or whatever event is bad is we have understood that even itself may not cannot cause the emotions so how are you thinking about it so kind of catch those thoughts from that particular pointers or particular question that why are you getting upset automatically it may lead to those situations and then you can it can lead to the thought processes that are there so it will direct your attention from event to the thoughts so one can ask question like this why am i getting upset or emotionally disturbed one of the main thing where you can see or identify what kind of thoughts are going on because in an abstract way identifying thoughts could be difficult or detecting thoughts could be difficult most of our thoughts are actually manifest themselves in self talk we constantly talk to ourselves even if nobody is there when we think or reflect on something we can comp- clearly realize that you are talking to yourself so thought processes are actually manifesting themselves mostly in terms of self talk so you are talking to yourself so that self talk is where you can detect your thought processes how are you talking to yourself what are you talking to yourself that is where thoughts can be detected some thoughts are at the in the in the form of imagine imagination in the form of certain uh, images but mostly it is self talk so in order to catch a thought you need to look at your self talk how are you talking to yourself because all the thoughts are manifesting themselves mostly in the form of self talk so that is where you can find out your irrational thoughts and expectations that are there mostly if something is irrational then there will be an unrealistic pessimism or exaggeration of your thinking for example in the earlier case failing in one thing and you are saying my life is a failure so it's a very clearly exaggeration and clearly unrealistic pessimism so if you are talking to yourself in terms of uh, very unrealistic pessimistic thoughts or exaggerating thoughts that is where you can kind of detect them see if you are using keywords like it never must always which are kind of absolute statement i must get it this should never happen to me so these are absolute statement which generally these are unrealistic and irrational simply because in the real life mostly things are not in the absolute terms sometimes things can happen sometimes it may not happen you cannot get something every time or kind of must always never they don't work mostly in the real life situation so most of these thoughts because you think something has to be there something should never happen those are unrealistic to causing exaggerated emotional disturbances so you need to find out are you thinking in terms of absolute statement like this so that is also an indication that these are unrealistic or uh, more irrational thoughts so these are some of the indicators for which can you use to detect your irrational thoughts once you detect the next step that uh, mm, that we need to do is disputing those irrational thoughts how can we dispute those irrational thoughts disputing is obviously if something is irrational we need to make it rational then use the rational thought processes use reasoning to remove the irrational part of it so albert ellis also again pause because it is, you cannot directly uh, very uh, you know abstract way you cannot do the disputing of thoughts so he gave some pointers or some important questions that you can ask to yourself to dispute those thoughts so albert ellis proposed asking questions as a technique to dispute irrational thoughts you can ask questions to detect also you can ask questions to dispute those thoughts so because by questioning your energy and attention goes there 
otherwise it is very abstract, it is difficult to catch a thought, difficult to change a thought. So, by questioning you can direct your attention. So, Albert Ellis proposes you can ask this kind of questions. So, one is what is the self-defeating irrational beliefs that I am not response? First, you, that is detection part that we have already talked about. What kind of thought is the causing disturbance? Find out that. So, what is that irrational thought that you want to dispute? Next is what evidence exists for the falseness of this belief? So, just ask what are the evidences available that this is a false statement? Just kind of corollary to that you can also ask does is there any evidence exists for the truth of this belief? Is there any evidence for the truth of this belief? Is there any evidence for the falseness of this belief? These are kind of using different question to direct your attention and make it a more conscious process because things may be very automatic. Fourth is what is the worst thing that can happen if you give up this belief? So, what will happen even if you if you just give up this belief? What is the worst thing that is going to happen? What, what kind of what is that worst thing that can happen? Fifth is what is the best thing that can happen if you give up this belief? Everything has pros and cons. So, there may be some positive things also. Can you think about it? So, these are different questions that you can use to kind of address or direct your attention to dispute irrational thoughts processes if you kind of detect them. So, more specific examples uh, we, uh, can be given here how to dispute using these questions. Uh, I took it from albertelis.org or uh, their website. It is a very clear uh, example how these questions can be used to dispute the irrational thoughts. So, let us say first question is what is the self-defeating irrational beliefs do I want to dispute? So, let us say you find out that I must receive love from someone for whom I really care. So, this same belief that you find out that you are disturbed because you did not receive love from someone whom you are expecting. So, let us say, so the best, if you, if you are feeling disturbed because of this, that means there is an assumption behind it that you must receive. So, that is an irrational thought according to this model. You are asked, you are kind of uh, making an absolute statement, I must receive love, you understand, from someone whatever in that context. So, let us say you find out that. How do you dispute that? So, next question is, what evidence exists for the falseness of this belief? You know? In what sense this is a irrational or false belief? So, Ellis kind of says for example, you can find out uh, no law on the universe exists that say that someone I care for must love me back. As a, there is no such rule as such. From your part what you are doing, but you cannot really uh, control the response of another person. That what that person will do, it is not in your hand. You know. So, there is no law as such that it will be reciprocated. So, that is uh, must get is not a rational part of it. I do not receive love from person, uh, one person, but still get it from others and find happiness that way. So, in that sense, you know, uh, it is not like end of the world itself. There are many other possibilities. If no one I care for ever uh, cares for me, which is very unlikely, I still find enjoyment in friendship, in work, in books and so many other activities in your life. If someone I deeply care for rejects me, that will be very unfortunate, but I still, I hardly die. It is not an end of it, you know. It is an expectation that you have, but you will feel sad about it, that is fine, but that is not kind of end of it in terms of. So, that is why if this, if you see these reasonings, these are more rational and more realistic in terms of how things happen in the real world. So, you can see that belief may have many false aspects to it. So, this kind of reasonings can be done. Obviously, one person when person is very under emotional impact, one may not be able to do it in uh, himself or herself simply because the impact of emotion could be very high. So, that is why you know people are generally asked to take support from others including professional support. That is what basically most of the therapists do because you cannot do it rational interpretation, they can do it. So, because they are not involved in that emotion. So, they are neutral. So, other person can support that process, but one can them themselves also do it if there is an enough motivation to it. So, this is for example, this is one uh, aspect where you can find out the falseness of this belief in some sense. Does any evidence exist for the truth of this belief? For example, not, not really. 
considerable uh, evidence exists that if I uh, kind of love someone dearly and never am loved in return that I will I will find myself disadvantaged, inconvenience, frustrated and deprived. There is no evidence as well obviously that will uh, may put me in some inconvenience and so on, but that does not mean uh, no, that is an absolute truth. I certainly would prefer therefore, not to get rejected, but no amount of inconvenience amount to a horror. So, inconvenience is ok, that is kind of understandable, uh, but still one can stand the frustration and loneliness. So, that is it is not like uh, end of everything. So, this is more realistic thought processes. What is the worst thing that can happen if you give up this belief? Uh, I would get deprived of various possible pleasures and convenience. So, a lot of projections and fantasies whatever you have about uh, other person probably lot of this thing will not be there. So, some conveniences pleasure would be kind of deprived that is ok. I would feel inconvenience by having to keep uh, looking for maybe some where else and so on. So, that is a reality uh, that is the worst thing the at, at, at the worst that could happen. What is the best thing that can happen? I could devote more time and energy to winning someone else love and probably find some other better options. I could devote myself to other enjoyable pursuits that have little to do with uh, loving or relating such as work or artistic endeavors. Many other alternative things where you can find meaning in your life. I could I could find it challenging and enjoyable to teach myself to live happily without whatever you know uh, other persons uh, presence in one's life. So, there could be many positive aspects to it, some negative aspects to it. So, the idea is that the Elise is asking ask this kind of questions. So, then all these irrational assumptions will come to in front of you and you will be able to kind of detect where am I going wrong in terms of thought processes, where I should, where I need to correct it. So, because in itself it is difficult. So, if you ask this kind of questions, it will help you to direct your energy to find out problems and flaws in your thought processes or irrational part of it, where you can have an intervention. So, that is the whole idea. Uh, so, these are some of the ways that one can do. So, a lot of simple exercise people can do in terms of using this kind of chart, where you can find out what is the event that is causing depression, anxiety or if any kind of emotions whenever something goes wrong in terms of emotional experiences why you can find out what, what is the activating event here, what is the consequence happening and what are the belief system associated with them in terms of using questions like that and then how can you dispute them. For example, in the earlier examples that we gave where we said no failing in one task and the person is believing I am a failure, I am a worthless person. One can dispute using uh, questions like that that earlier we have. Also, we can directly question like how do I become a total failure if I not succeed in one task? I have failed does not mean I am a failure. So, kind of this kind of irrational aspects will be kind of come in front if you can devote more direct your energy like that, attention like that. So, one can use this kind of chart to kind of do this practice. So, uh, in, a f in terms of final thought, obviously, it is not easy in every context when the emotions are very strong, probably it will not be easy to do this kind of task. Uh, so, a lot of people actually needs help, professional help or maybe some kind of loving people or relation people who are around them in terms of who understand them. Many people, you know, actually tell them that this is not the right way of thinking. No? That is what our near and dear people all the time when we feel disturbed or when we are not happy or sadness, sadness comes to us. Other people around us kind of detect that my thought processes is not right when we talk to them because they are not in that emotion. So, they can clearly see something is irrational. So, supportive network or taking help from other people or especially who are trustworthy people in your life they can detect lot of this irrational part of it, especially when you are in that emotions, if you yourself is not able to detect it. Professionals can always do it like counselors and therapists and so on. One can do it oneself also, may, it may take some time because uh, it is not easy to immediately change lot of this thought because this could be very deep and unconscious. So, needs practice and understanding and motivation also. And many times we may need support and uh, help of other people in that context. So, support of therapist and structured um, the professional setting could facilitate this process of restructuring of our thoughts. And obviously, the techniques that are used could also be used by oneself if slowly slowly that impact of emotion 
reduces. So, that can be done also. So, these are some of the things, this is one way where we can do change in the thought processes to change our emotions. This is one of one of the ways where we can do an adaptive emotion regulation uh, using ABC model. So, with this I stop here. Uh, in the next class, we will be talking about uh, mindfulness and other adaptive emotion regulation strategy. Thank you. Thank you.